Today I'm working on my Echo PB-500T backpack blower. I've had this for about six years, bought it from Home Depot, and uh, here recently I've developed a problem where uh, it won't get up to speed, and then uh, finally it got to a point where it didn't want to idle. So uh, I started looking into things, and um, I've learned on these Echoes it always pays to check uh, the ignition and make sure that it's okay, because uh, I've run into a problem with this before. Uh, even though you get a nice healthy spark, um, uh, you have some performance issues. You'll see one of my other videos where I talk about that on a PB251 blower where uh, the ignition timing seemed to be off even though I was getting a spark. Um, it didn't want to run and when it did run, it didn't want to run very fast. So I'm getting a similar issue with this and I'm going to go through a little uh, uh, check on it and uh, show you how I check out that ignition coil and then... Um, I found out on this one it is uh, the ignition coil. Uh, the most other the common problems on these also are the carburetor, of course. Uh, they wear out over time and you have to replace the parts inside. Uh, so this started about a week ago and uh, I thought, well, you know, I'd give it a tune-up. So I went and got one of the Echo Repower Kits, or they call it UCAN Kits now. And I went ahead and replaced the fuel filter, air filter, and spark plug. And it seemed to help it, and then uh, only about two days after that, it started bogging down again and not running at full speed. So one thing that will help you on uh, troubleshooting these Echoes is go ahead and go on their website and download their, uh, uh, what they call service uh, data. And uh, I have just one page out of the service data for this. I'm going to show it to you, and then uh, I'm going to show you the two uh, measurements that I'm going to make and to determine if the coil here is good or bad. And I'm going to zoom in and show you where the coil is located on this thing and then show you what terminals you need to check. So first, I'm going to swing the camera down and uh, show you this service information that I got off the Echo website. It's important to get the right one because I've noticed that uh, sometimes the data from one to another Echo machine is slightly different. And uh, even though they look the same and a lot of times the parts look the same, there is some slight differences in it. So this is what the data sheet looks like. If you zoom in just a bit here, the thing that I'm interested in is the uh, the primary uh, coil resistance and the secondary coil resistance. And you'll notice what the specification is here. The primary is 160 to 200 ohms, and the secondary is 1200 ohms to 1800 ohms. And then on the P uh, the PB251 blower that you'll see my other video. Uh, those values were off, and uh, when I replaced the coil, uh, of course the new coil had the values that were stated there in the service uh, um, data, and the uh, thing worked uh, excellent. So uh, I'm going to zoom in on the uh, blower here, and see if I can show you where the coil is located, the terminals you need to check. So one of the first things I do is right down here is your P lead and you'll notice this wire comes directly off of the, the coil here and so when this lead shorts out that's what turns the engine off. When you short out the primary to the coil here that's actually a kill switch that stops the, uh, the blower from running and of course that goes up to your handle there where the switch is. Uh, you'll find similar switches on the weed eaters and edgers and so forth. Uh, so the first thing I like to do is disconnect uh, the P-lead and then I take my ohmmeter. Let's see if we're in view here. I think I need to zoom out just a little bit. So I take my ohmmeter here and uh, I set it for the lowest range. Um, 200 ohms in this case I set it for. And then uh, of course anytime you're using an ohmmeter I always like to do a sanity check on it. And uh, Hopefully you can see this, and I'll short the leads, and then make sure that my ohmmeter reads something close to zero. Uh, in this case, it's reading 0.7, which is probably the resistance just in the wires here and the test leads. And uh, the first thing I do is I want to check and see if my kill switch is actually operating properly, because sometimes they can short, uh, short out, and then uh, cause you not to have a spark. In this case here, I know I have a spark. It's just that I think it's out of time and it's not allowing the engine to run at full speed. But anyway, we'll go through that. Now, this wire here, 
you know, goes directly to the coil. This one actually goes into this little conduit here that leads up to the switch on the handle. And then also this other wire here that you see grounded also leads up to that switch. And so when that switch is off, you're going to read low resistance, you know, something like 0.1 or 0.2 ohms, or, uh, you know, maybe a little bit higher than that, maybe 1 ohms, or 1 or 2 ohms, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and check that. Right now the switch is off, and so if I go between ground and this wire here, you'll see that it's reading 0.7, which means that the switch is actually in the off position which would cause the uh, this circuit to short and stop the blower from running. And so now if I reach up there and flip that switch on, then uh, our resistance should go over range, you know, in the mega ohms, indicating the switch is operating properly. So I'm gonna move this switch down into the run position and then check this again. And you'll notice that we don't have anything. So that tells me that the kill switch is operating properly. Uh, so now with this still disconnected, what I want to do is I want to go across the primary coil. And in this case, after we reviewed the data sheet here, the primary coil resistance should be 160 to 200 ohms. Uh, in this case, I've already measured it. I know that it's on the high side. So I'm going to change my scale, my range on my meter to 2K. Uh, that way I'll see something that's over 200 ohms. Because uh, like I said, I've already tested this and I know and I'm going to go across the, the P lead here and ground. All right, so we're going to do that. And you'll notice I'm at uh, 380 ohms, which uh, 200 is the max. So that tells me that uh, there's something definitely wrong in the primary circuit of the coil. Now on the secondary side, um, it's uh, 1200 ohms to 1800 ohms uh, for the secondary resistance and the secondary resistance is going to come here from your plug wire to ground and in this case here I've already measured it and I noted that it was uh, well into the mega ohms in fact my meter range only goes to 20 megs and I'm over that so uh, I'll just demonstrate that take one of your probes uh, you're going to be careful when you want to contact in there. It's like a little spring. You have to kind of feel it and know that you're touching it, maybe at an angle like this, and you know you're up against the metal inside there. And then you can go to any ground. Here I'm going to the cylinder, or you can come back down here where the coil is at. The whole engine block is ground, so it really doesn't matter where you put the probes. But as you notice, I'm on the 20 meg scale, and I'm over range. So I'm quite surprised that I get any spark at all but uh, it's definitely uh, a coil problem here. So I'm going to order a coil. I've already looked it up. The original uh, coil for this from uh, E-Parts Replacement is uh, 80 bucks. So uh, when you talk about the new one, a new one of these, it's you know, 350 to $400 for a backpack blower. So it makes it well worth buying a, another coil for it. Uh, I tend to fix things instead of just throwing them away. So in this case here, uh, also there's a cover. Uh, they made this one very easy to access. I really like this. Uh, in this case here, you have a cover that holds, uh, that's held on with one screw that covers the coil. Uh, basically, I already removed. There's a cage here that goes on the back of the engine. I've already removed that, so you can get in there and see it a little better. So you take this off. It takes a, a metric. Uh, hex wrench to take those off and then uh, one uh, it's got one bisexual screw here it takes a Phillips or a straight take that off and then remove this cover and then you can see the coil in there and then there's two score uh, two screws to take the coil off and then uh, when you replace it you just put it back in there and then of course on your data sheet here you'll find that there is a clearance that you have to maintain between the magneto armature and the flywheel so uh, oftentimes I've used a, a piece of flat plastic or something that's the, the, this, that happens to be the thickness I need, or you can sometimes get a feeler gauge in there. In this case here, uh, the air gap is looks like it's 30 to 40 thousandths on the service information. 
Now, one more thing I want to mention on this. I'm going to sweep back down here to this data sheet. Now, like I said, you can go on the Echo website and you can get the manual for these if you don't have an uh, operator's manual. You can download that. If you don't have a parts catalog, um, you can download one of those. I don't think they, they, in fact, I know they don't come with the new the new part, the, the new uh, blowers and weed eaters, but you can order them. Or you can go on, I'm sorry, you can go online and download those things. And so I did, I downloaded the uh, the parts catalog and it has all the parts that it takes to build one of these. It has all the part numbers and you can order your parts. And um, the uh, anyway, back to the uh, service bulletin here, uh, the service uh, data, you can download these things. This is just one sheet out of it. Uh, the part that I was interested in was the coil, but you can get a good look at that. It has you know what part numbers it covers and then also very important when you download these things to make sure that you select the right serial number range and uh, my serial number is located it's usually on on these things it's like a little piece of tape that's uh, somewhere like on the engine casting uh, mine happens to be like right down in this area here and it has the serial number to it and then when you go to the website and you start to download your your uh, your data sheets and your parts catalog and all that stuff you have to select the right range because uh, of serial number because these things even though it's a PB 500 T blower from year to year they may change slightly uh, in my case I've noticed there's two in there uh, two different part numbers for the carburetor and two different part numbers for the coil and then some of the other parts, the piston, I think. Uh, so you have to make sure you select the right range of serial numbers so you get the right parts. And then I usually order my parts from e-replacement. They have a really nice website where you can look up all your parts. Uh, sometimes I go to Amazon and get some things, but a lot of that stuff is Chinese knockoff stuff, and I've had fairly good luck with that. Maybe 70% of that of uh, knockoff carburetors and things work good. And the other ones, I was able to get them to work with a lot of tweaking. And so I don't think that, uh, you know, I mean, you may be tempted for the price for sure because you can get a carburetor for $10 or something. But, uh, and I've used them and they work okay. I just, I prefer the original equipment. And definitely for this coil, I'm probably going to get the original, the original piece. So anyway, that concludes this video about the ignition system on Echoes. This twice I've run into a strange problem like this. I really like the Echo stuff. It doesn't break down much, but the... The coils are one thing that uh, when you have a problem, it always pays to get your data sheet, do a couple of measurements before you go buying a bunch of carburetor kits and other parts, and just make sure your coil is good to start with, and then it'll make troubleshooting a lot easier. Okay, thanks for watching.